Nobody listens to me, so I don't see why I should listen to you. Well, Butch won't bother you again. Yeah, well, I'm not hanging around to find out. Me and Luke have seen him off before. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me if Luke wanted him to be best man. Give it a rest, will you? You can mess up your lives, but you're not going to mess up mine. But you chose to come back. Oh, don't I know it. The biggest mistake I ever made. Well, go on. Run back to Mum and Dad, then. That's exactly what I intend on doing, Luke. I don't think they're going to be too happy when they hear about you and Tina. You won't tell them, will you? Not so smug now, are you? I thought it was going to be so good when I came back. Well, it still can be. Jess, I want you to stay. Look, nothing's the same. Hiya. Hi. That's it. I'm sorry. I've got to... Well, look, I'll take the day off work. We look, can talk. Just don't, Biff. Then I'll walk with you. Look, I'm sorry. Jess. Look, I'll write or something. Jess! Ah, she'll probably be back in ten minutes. And what are you getting out of this? Your mum sends me trailing out to get you a treat, you don't even touch it. And don't tell me he's heartbroken, he's ungrateful. I'll have that. I hope it chokes you. At least he's not wasting it. You set me up with that, Jessica. Hey, don't blame me if she didn't fall for your charms. You told me she fancied me. She might have been playing hard to get. So hard, she jumped on next train to London. I'll do you. See, it's what you call psychology. I mean, you might have been coming over as being too keen. Ah, oh, like a rat up a drain pipe. You shouldn't have had that wash, Butch. I mean, I've told you the facts of life, son. What other advice can I give you? Get a bag on your head. <laughs> no, come on, love. Come on. Yeah, I'll help your mum with this. Come on, now. What is it? It's the wedding list. Suppose I can cross Jessica off. Look at you. It's as if Jess would never hear. They don't blame us if she walked out on you. It wasn't me she walked out on. Of course it wasn't. Where are you going? Out! It would never have worked out between him and Jess any road. You don't know that. Your brother didn't help by getting heavy with her. It had now to do with Butch. She knew. Knew what? She knew what Biff was like. Meaning? Nothing. Tell me. I'm not being accused of stirring it again. Forget I said out. Oh, sure. You're talking about my sister and my best mate. That time Jess walked in and found me and Biff together. We had that out. It was a stupid misunderstanding. Luke. I was covering for him. I didn't want to mess things up between you and him, or him and Jess. He was making a play for me. She blamed me, but she knew it was him, all right. She walked in and heard him telling me that he wanted me. That he wanted... How long have you been up? Ages. What time is it? Eight. Four and a half hours to learn half the syllabus. If you don't know it now, you never will. Oh, rubbish, I've got my crib notes. Look. I'll still be learning stuff till the minute we go in. Oh, who am I kidding? This is never going to work. It's biff, isn't it? I just can't get over it. The big best mates act. Going out with my sister, moving in here, and all the time he's just sniffing after you. Look, forget about it. I'll make you a coffee. He's not in. Don't start. I've only come to pick up the rest of this stuff. I bet you waited specially, didn't you, till you knew he'd gone? Oh, yeah. So I could try and get you into bed again, in your dreams. No, cos you knew he'd kick you into next week if he found you. Like he did with your Ben, you mean? Get out of here! Now, you sit down and you <laughs> listen! You might have filled Luke's head with a load of fairy tales, but it didn't wash with me. I know what your little game is. My game? Yeah. Picking at his mates and his family one by one till you've got him all to yourself. It's pathetic. And you... You are evil. That's right, Beth. Get out of your system. He'll see through you soon enough. I'll make sure he does. Key! And when he does, you'll be out of that door before you know what's hit you. What mug will have you then, eh? With a kid on your hands. Your mum's pigs might fly. Biology. Next exams are practical. Should offer me body up to medical science. Don't tempt me. Come on. Look, Tina, I can't. I've got masses of revision still to do. What are you on about? We're meeting me mum and dad over the road. What? 
In the wool pack to discuss wedding arrangements. I told you. Oh, but, Tina, I'm up to my eyes. Look, the exam was terrible this afternoon. None of the questions I've revised came up. Look, I've got to catch up on the next two papers or I've had it. So do it when you get back. Tina. Come on, we're going to be late. And don't forget your... Excuse me. I don't know what went on this afternoon, but I'm warning you. Come near Tina again and I'll break your legs. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Hi, right, Dad. Hi, Tina. Oh, Luke. Hi. Where's our butch tonight? Stopping him washing his hair. Hey, look, I've got some smashing ideas for a big day. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Listen, Luke, you're going to get some drinks in, or what? Right, yeah. What's everyone having? You can start now. You can start the exam. Have you got that radio out yet? Nearly. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what did you do that for, you daft bat? I couldn't resist you. Well, try a bit harder next time. Right, come on, give us some money. Eh? Well, only we're going to get out in his wedding dress. Here. What's that? Ten quid and I want the change. A ten, oh, you're only daughter and you can't get a decent frock. I've got an Oxfam shop or summer. But she'll only be wearing it once. And if there's out left, see if you can't get me a nice pair of breeches. I'm having this. Come on, Mum, you can't get a dress for 35 quid. You're having your frock, love, don't you worry. Even if tight behind here won't cough up. Come on, love. Hey, Mary Quant, drive me and your sister into Otten. I'm hoping me, Dad. Go and check them out at Road. Yes, madam. Eh, I want a wedding dress. Oh. Some uh, Lady Diana-ish. Well, perhaps a Princess Margaret might be more appropriate. Hey. Oh, no, it's not for me. Go and get her look. She's carping in the window. It's for me daughter. Here she is now. She's wedding a doctor. Very respectable. Seen the price of some of these, ma'am? It's daylight robbery. Don't you worry about that, love. Daddy'll take care of it. Aye, I'll have to rob a bank. Shut it. Can I go and have a pint? No, stop here. You're getting that booze who we won't see you again, and you're not driving us home legless. Who is a little tinker? I'll try this one. It is £900. Very reasonable. Go on, love, try it on. Rang. Well, there's plenty more to go, huh? Yeah. Try this one. Hey, Miss, excuse me, can I use your little girl's room? Yes, it's through there. Right. I'll leave a penny on the seat. Hey, you. Don't move. I won't be long. Take as long as you like. There's no wrong with a man admiring the female form. You're perv. He must have been banned from his shop for lecturing. Ah, he's like his dad. Great at looking. Doesn't get us a dress, though, does it? Well, you have confidence in your mother. You haven't got that kind of money, ma'am. That silk one will love like. Do you mean this? When did you get that? When I went to the lobby. Oh, thanks, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> It'll go with this and all. Oh, sad or what? Hey, I say, we've still got your dad's money and all. Not a bad job, yours, you know, swanning around all day. Well, it's not so bad if they leave me to it. Tits are so busy watching their own backs, they forget about them. Give us that much. No. I can have it for the no. wedding. Dingle alert, eh? Hey? Get in here. Hiya. Oh, yeah? Caught your sky in then. Uh, we're on uh, company business. Give us another one. Hey, I got it. Yeah, well, I hope it's not catching. Me wedding dress. You're not going through with all that palaver, are you? The full Monty. It's going to be mega. All my family's coming. The robot will have its work cut out. It's a real pain. Eh? Exam this morning. Oh. Three hours dissecting a flipping onion. Hey, I had a brilliant morning, Luke. You should see the dress we got. No, oh, I bet you look great. Mum and Dad are pulling out all the stops for the wedding. <laughs> you know they haven't got much money, though. 
Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just have to keep things modest. Luke, we're getting married. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event. It means such a lot to them. It does to me, too. I know. You'll be able to help towards it, though, won't you? Well, I want to. Look, I'll see what I can raise. Oh, thanks, Luke. It's going to be brilliant. Hey, listen, let's go to the wool pack tonight and celebrate. It's dead exciting, isn't it? Yeah. It's supposed to help music. That isn't. Oh, come and dance. I'm working. Get that. Ah, oh, that Luke. Just pop by to see, uh, to see how you were, uh... A bit loud, isn't it? <laughs> How's studies coming along? Yeah, OK. Fine. Good, good. Well, I'd like to see a young man who knows where he's going. We're getting married, Mr Pollard. Yes. Yes, I believe. I'll have to see if I can't find a nice little uh, present for you both. Did you want something? I just came to see how you were getting along. Ace. Ace, yeah. Good. Um, well, listen, whilst I'm here, why don't I give you one of these? If you're going to be setting up home together, it might be of interest. Oh. I'm going to be running auctions from the village hall. Well, I'm a bit strapped. To be honest, you haven't really thought about buying furniture. Hey. Auctions are about buying and selling. If you want to raise some cash, get your hands on some readies, well, you'd be surprised what some items fetch. Oh, I have nothing to sell. No? Well, <laughs> what about the dresser? Hmm? And the, uh, the blanket box? Well, I tell you what, there's no shortage of buyers for a clock like that. How much? <laughs> it's not for sale. No, oh, well, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it, how people's values differ? For some people, a piece of furniture they hardly even notice is worth the king's ransom. For other people, they have different values. Family, children, home. Now, those are what really matter. What do you think? Very civil of you to get this round in, lad. Very civil. You know, Dad's really taken to you. My dad'll take to anyone who'll stand him a drink. You could learn a bit from Luke. Oh, aye. I'll just nip out and put someone up the stick. Bless her, that. At least we know you could do something right. It's all right for him. It's not his mum and dad that's selling out for a wedding. Luke knows that. He knows the sacrifices you're making. That's why he's offered to pay for it, haven't you? Oh. No, you're a scholar and a gentleman, lad. I'll be proud to call you son. And you can call me dad. Go on, then. Dad? Go on. Thanks. Dad. Hiya. Hi. Is that it? Hi. Tina, I'm trying to study. I'm at least two months behind in this subject. I just can't see myself passing at this rate. Here you are. The guest list for the wedding so far. So far? There must be everybody in a 70-mile radius on this. Who's Uncle Albert? Me uncle, of course. Tina, this is ridiculous. There must be over 100 people on this list. Look, why the hell do you say I'd pay for it? Where am I going to get the money from for this? Don't worry. Father of the bride pays, remember? And why did you announce in the pub that because I Because was... my dad's a bit embarrassed about not having the ready cash. He's got money coming in at the end of the month for some scrap he sold off, but he's a bit short at the moment. But he's going to pay? Of course. I mean, we'll have to fund the wedding ourselves and he'll pay us back later. We still have to raise money from somewhere. That shouldn't be too difficult for a smart, handsome lad like you. Oh, you're not still studying, are you, Luke? Let's go to the wool pack. There's nothing on telly. Yeah, that sounds great, but I can't. Got to finish this little minute up to my neck. All work and no play makes Tina very, very restless. Tina, I have to do this. Do you reckon we can still sleep together when your mum and dad are here? What do you mean? When they come for the wedding, of course. I oh, know it's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding. Hold on. Who said anything about my parents coming? They're not coming. There's no way I'm going to tell them, not until the ink's dry. Oh, no, of course. I forgot you're marrying a dingle. 
They're not exactly going to be doing cartwheels over that, are they? Probably not, but that isn't why I'm not going to tell them. You're ashamed of me and my family, aren't you? Tina. Tina! Secretary, it's Tina Dingle here. I need to get a message to Luke McAllister. He's in for his physics A-level this afternoon. Yeah, but it's really important that you get him to phone me before he goes in. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. She was very anxious that you should ring her before you went in. Did you say what was wrong? No, but the secretary says she sounded a bit distressed. Oh, hell. Tina, it's me. Luke? What? I'm scared. Why? What's the matter? I'm frightened, Luke. I think it's the baby. I've been feeling really rough since you went. I'm getting terrible stomach pains. Right, uh, I'm on my way. But I've got to go. Tina's really ill. Hold on. Please, she needs me. Yeah, but you missed your exam. I know, but this is more important. Is it? Look, Luke, just stop for a second and think about it. I haven't got a second. She's ill. Yeah, but if you miss this paper, you won't get your physics A-level. Without that, you won't get into Edinburgh. Your place depends on it. I'm sorry, I've got to go. In here! Everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What about you, the baby? Oh, that was just some indigestion. No, I feel much better now. Do you want a coffee? Anyone would think you were at death's door the way you carried on. Oh, but I did feel awful. I wasn't to know it was indigestion. I'm not a doctor, am I? Nor well, will I be at this rate. You do realise that dashing back here for you, I've missed my physics exam. You're so kind, Luke, are you? I don't want a cup of coffee. Luke, I'm sorry. I was worried about the baby. Look, since we're here together, why don't we make the most of it? Do you understand? I've missed my exam. That means I won't get the grades I need. I need three A's to get into Edinburgh. And thanks to you and a bit of wind, that's not going to happen now, is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. What? I didn't want to live in Edinburgh anyway. Wait, Terry, get this lady a light sherry. Luke. What's the matter? I feel awful. Is it your stomach again? No, about what I did today. I've screwed everything up for you. I'm really sorry. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about the exams. Why don't you do the sitting room? It's my kitchen day today. If I start changing my schedule, I don't know where I am. Well, I'll be out from under your feet in a minute, Betty. Where are you going? Hotton. Luke, you can't. The vicar's coming round to talk about the wedding. I'll be there. I'd just like to make sure we got the money to pay for it all. <laughs> Makes sense to me. You keep out of it. Nobody asked you. Get on with your cleaning. I don't take orders from you, madam. I work for the McAllisters. I've got to find a job, Tina. My head said if I don't sort myself out, I've no chance of taking my resits. So what? What's more important, Luke? Us or your exams? Same thing. You can't live on romance, you know. Keep out of it. Look, I promise I'll be back for the vicar. But I've heard they're taking on casuals for poultry packing. At least it mean a few quid for us. Oh, a lad with his education ought to be worth more than that. Oh, clumsy me. Looks like more cleaning for you, Betty. What are you cutting the crusts off for? The bread's not mouldy. Because this is the proper way to do it, you know now. I don't know why you're here. It's me and Luke he's come to see. I'm leaving nothing about this wedding to chance. They are your reverence. Cucumber sandwiches. Get stuck in. Thank you, Mrs Tingle. As you know, I'm part of the teen ministry, so I don't get to Emmerdale as often as I'd like, and uh, I regret I don't know all my parishioners personally. I take it you are regular churchgoers. Devout. We never miss a Sunday. Well, that makes a refreshing change these days. Take our religion very seriously. We're always distributing goods to the poor. How would you spass him? Well, go on, don't let us stop you. We're busy. I had an altar. You've got a very nice big garden out there. Plenty of room to park a caravan. Have you been drinking? It's for Biff. He's a friend of yours, isn't he? Not anymore, he isn't. Well, go on, then. Clear off, Torag. <sighs> I'm very sorry about that, Your Reverence. Go on, where was he up to? You were just telling me about your charity work. Thanks to you, we've got to turn up at church for the next four weeks. Devout. Hey, it won't do you any harm. Hey, I say, in less than a month, we'll be welcoming you into our family. That's got to be worth a celebration drink, hasn't it? Champagne all round? Two halves of lager and a glass of water, please. A 
applying for a credit card. Who's going to give you a credit card? It's not for me, it's for you. What? Look, Tina, I don't want to get into all that. Oh, come on, banks are chucking money at people nowadays. Yeah, but the trouble with banks is they have this funny habit of wanting their money back. Eventually. Look, I'll think about it. I'd better get going. Happy job, Untin. Yes, what? All right. Hey, what can I do for you, gorgeous? It's not you I'm after. Watch her, Eric. She'll try and sell you a granny. <laughs> Interested in getting your hands on something with a bit of class? Only I'm trying to sell a real antique. Mind you, it might be a bit upmarket for your setup. Well, I'm always interested in a bit of uh, quality. What are you selling? A grandfather clock. Very classy. Sounds like my sort of thing. Right. Why don't you come and see me tonight? I'll be at Luke's. How much? Well, admittedly, it's a nice piece. Certainly needs some attention, eh? How much are you going to give me for it? Did you have a figure in mind? Three grand. <laughs> Monopoly money, my dear. It's already had a knock, as you can see. I'll give you a thousand pounds at most. Fifteen hundred. There's nothing wrong with it. Stuff like this fetches thousands in swanky antique shops. I'll give you twelve hundred pounds at most. It's worth double that. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Good. For cash, and I need a receipt. No problem. For six hundred pounds. Oh. Feathering your own little nest, eh? No more than you. Are you sure it's yours to sell? Me and Luke are engaged. What's his is mine. And what's yours? He's your own. Something like that. Mm. So do we have a deal then, or what? Yes. If everything seems to be above board, why not? Would you want me to gift drop it for you? Ah, uh, no. Um, actually, I heard that you have a problem with the catering for your wedding. Don't tell me you're a dab and with a volivant. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's just that uh, I might be in a position to um, supply you with the booze. At a very competitive price, of course. Well, that's not to do with me. My dad's sorting it out. You'll have to see him. Ah, right. Well, uh, fair enough, eh? I'll, get, I'll pick this up uh, tomorrow morning. Right. But my bike... You don't even need it anymore. Not now you've packed in school. At least see how much they give you for it. What's the place called? Hot and Hot Rods. Right, well, while you're there, you can see if they've got any part-time jobs going, can't you? Yeah, but if I get a job, I'll need transport, won't I? We need the cash now, Luke. If you get a job in Hotton, it's only a push bike ride away, isn't it? I'm only trying to think of ways to raise cash. Honestly, I am. I know, I know. It's just a cracking bike. I've just got it running so smooth. I'd like to think we were worth it. Me and your baby. All right, I'll see what they'll offer me. Good morning. Is it a convenient time? Perfect. Come in. Right. Aren't you forgetting Summit? What? Brass. I've been brought up to see cash up front. <laughs> I bet you have. It's all there. Twelve hundred pounds. Been brought up to check and all. <laughs> and the receipt? In the envelope. For six hundred pounds. Yes. Yeah. As requested. Do you still want me to supply the reception booze? Yep, that's about it. Will you be long? I'll be out within five minutes. Hiya, how'd you get on? It's a slow bus back from Hotton. Oh, great. How much did you get for it? 450. Not bad, really. Why didn't you sell your helmet and all? At least let me keep that. Hope someday I'll have another bike. Of course you will. Listen, you do think it's worth it, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Good. I've been making some money for us and all. Oh, yeah? How's that, then? I sold some from here. And since you haven't noticed, it don't matter, does it? Tell me you haven't sold the grandfather clock. Yep. Old and unreliable, you said so yourself. Your bike money will pay for Dolores' bridesmaid dress, and the clock money will go towards mine and some catering. Tina, I have to get it back. 
Who did you sell it to? Luke, don't go putting an old clock over our wedding day. It's the most important day of our lives. And what does an old piece of wood and metal matter when it comes to our happiness? Luke, it were a clock. Think of it as a present passed down the generations of your dad's family to us. We needed the money and they gave it to us. I'll be disowned. If your family don't want to have out to do with you, me and the baby, then sod them. Six hundred pounds? Yeah. I bet it was worth five times that. Well, it were worth now, stood over there. Look at it like this. I reckon we're saving your mum and dad about four grand doing it as we are. Not much here, is there? Do you need a hand? Is this the best wedding stationery you've got? It's the only wedding stationery we got. Well, I suppose it'll have to do then, won't it? I could show you the catalogue, order something special. Depends how soon the big day is and uh, how many invited. Well, I suppose you two will have to be invited, won't you? I'll do yours now. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, we'd love to come. Well, it saves on stamps, doesn't it? Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Do you and your fiancé have some more heirlooms to dispose of? No, well, that's what I wanted to see you about, actually. Ah. Well, I'm always on the lookout for quality items, please. No, well, the thing is, she shouldn't have sold it to you. Oh, dear. No, well, it was a mistake, you see. A mistake? Well, yeah, she was raising money for the wedding. I see. Uh, but I've brought the money with me, so uh, we can sort it all out now. Ah, right. 600 quid. Count it if you like. I trust you, Luke. Right then, so, uh, where's the clock? Yes, well, there is a problem there, you see. I've, uh, I've already sold it on. Well, I suppose we could institute proceedings to get it back, but that would still involve the police. It would be awful if your fiancé found herself detained in one of Her Majesty's establishments and um, missed the big day. OK, just give me the money back. Um, well, I was coming to that. You see, I'm already quite involved in this wedding of yours. What? Yes, you see, um, your in-laws have asked me to supply the alcohol for the reception. Um, I've negotiated a bargain price of £500. Your change. Where have you been? Dropped in on Eric Pollard. Then I went for a walk. What do you want to see Pollard for? I was just worried about the clock. <sighs> I thought we'd agreed on that. No, it doesn't matter, he sold it anyway. Well, at least we got some money for the wedding. Yeah, took another 500 off me for the booze. You knew that a reception would be expensive when you asked me. Maybe this isn't about clocks and booze. Maybe you just don't want to marry me. Oh, that's not true. Isn't it? Me and my family can't do anything right in your eyes. Maybe you're just looking for an excuse to get shot of me and the baby. Look, I love you, Tina. I can't wait for us to get married. Really? Really. Come on. Help me with these invitations. Listen, what about your mum and dad? Eh? Well, do we give them one of these cards or do we buy them a special one? You haven't told him, have you? Well, I've meant to. It's I just knew that... you weren't man enough to stand by me. I'm just a bit of rough to you. You say you want to marry me, but you haven't got the guts to tell your stuck-up parents. But... Tina! It's not like that. I just don't know where to start. The clock would be enough to send Dad up the wall. I'd say that was the least of your worries. Do you want me to dictate it to you, save you sitting around all night? Dear Mum and Dad, I've got some really great news. There's a firm here does wedding catering, Drummond's. Oh, no, you don't want them. They did Elsie Hart's wedding, <laughs> running Buffy for 60. I think they only used a quarter of boiled ham between the lot of them. <laughs> I'm sure they cut the roast beef with a razor blade. It wasn't cheap, either. Well, that don't matter. Yes, it does. I've got to pay for it. We've got to pay for it. There's two of us now, remember? Well, three, really. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 
Well, I better get off, see if I can get some work. Make some money for us to spend, eh? Now, if you're really stuck, I'll do catering for you. Save you wasting your money on a load of rubbish. Oh, Betty, would you? Nothing fancy, mind. But you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Elsie Hart's mother was nearly suicidal, poor soul. Of <laughs> course, I told her everything was very nice, really, but she knew. Will you let me know as soon as you can how much it's going to cost? Right. Thanks. Hello, Luke. What can we do for you, then? Hiya. Um, I'm looking for work. Wondered if you might have anything. <sighs> well, as you can see, it's not really your kind of thing here. I mean, we're either digging holes or baking. I'll do anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Luke. I just haven't got anything. Hang on a minute. I might have a few days for you. Cash in hand. Yeah? Yeah, but that's all it'll be, mine. Just a few days. That's fine with me. Good. Step this way, young man. Hello? No, he's not in at the moment. Who? Oh, great! Can't you guess? It's Tina. Yes, I am listening, Bernard. No. Oh, well, I'll pass your message on for you. He'll be ever so upset. Hiya. Where have you been? Working. I've got a job building Cathy's tea rooms. You look horrible. Thanks. <laughs> we were digging all day. Did they use you as a spade? I've never been so tired in all my life. My legs are like jelly. Look, I think I'm going to go have a bath. Oh, sorry, you can't. I've just had one. Water's cold. Oh, no. Well, I didn't know you were a labourer, did I? Give it half an hour. I've been up to my neck all day in mud, trying to dig a flipping hole. Oh, well, I'm proud of you. Hey, listen, do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad. Bad news is your dad rang. Good news is they're not coming to the wedding. Never mind, Luke. It might build you up some muscles. I've got muscles. I mean proper ones. All solid and rippling. I'd like that. They are, Luke. Cheers. Oh, who's your friend? Oh, this is Tina, my fiance. Fiance? P. Nice to meet you, love. I'm Mike. I know. Oh, so he's been telling you what a good day he's been having, has he? You're joking. He's been moaning ever since he got home. <laughs> Tina. <laughs> well, don't worry. Once we finish with him, he'll look like Superman. Well, that's great, because I've always liked men in tights. Yeah, well, uh, you can have a bit of the new thing if you can't wait. Yeah, well, thanks for the drink, Mike. My pleasure, Luke. <laughs> See you, sweetheart. See you, Mike. Oh, he's nice, him, isn't he? Oh, you obviously think so. Don't be jealous, Luke. Give you worry lines. Spoil your good looks. You! I want Biff to be my best man. Well, tough, cos he hates you. You're better off without him. I'm not. He's my mate. Well, go and ask him if you must but you can tell him from me to keep his hands to himself. I am not having him touching me up during the ceremony, right? All right, Luke. All right, Biff. Look, can I have a word? Far away. Look, I'm sorry about what happened, Biff. But I'm getting married and... Well, you are my best mate. I'd like you to be there. My best man, if you would. Please. OK. Really? Yeah, really. I wouldn't miss it. You don't think anybody else is going to take my place, do you? <laughs> Thanks, Biff. Do you want to come and join us? Not really. Well, I suppose I should. Go on. What do you think of this one? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, there's no point shelling all that out, though. Of course there is. You want to look right, don't you? <laughs> I'll still look like a dog. Don't be daft. You'd look fabulous in that. Oh, I couldn't even help pay towards it. Bridesmaids don't pay for their own dresses. Listen, this is my wedding and you're my best mate. I want you to look gorgeous. <laughs> you prank. Well, almost as gorgeous as the bride. <laughs> Luke agrees and all. He's been fantastic, Dolores. Every time Mum and Dad have run short of cash, he's stepped right in and paid. Oh, it's really worked out well, you and him, hasn't it? Yeah. Who would have thought it, eh? So you want this one, then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you wouldn't go off to France on the razzle, would you, Luca? When? When we're married. No, I'll never leave your side. Because you know some blokes can't wait to get away. Still, when you see what they have to put up with at home, you can understand it, can't you? If you've got something to say to me, why don't you just say it to my face? What's up with you? Just keep that shut right. I'm not in the mood. What have I said? Terry's gone to France on business, right? So save your cheap cracks. Let's just find a table, Tina. Oh, aye, I forgot. He really knows his antiques, don't he? If she believes he's gone to France buying furniture, she'll believe out. What do you mean by that? I wasn't talking to you. Well, keep it that way. Listen, if that's what Terry's told you he's doing, it's fine. Look, come on, Tina. Everybody else here knows that he's gone off buying cheap booze. You live in a dream world. Oh, I. I must have dreamt up Eric Pollard coming round and offering to supply our wedding, eh? But we can get it cheap. No duty. Bon voyage. Well, have I rendered you speechless or what? Your mum thinks it's great. Really? It needs taking up a bit. Maybe we could uh, do a temporary job with a few pins. Dolores, it does not need taking up a bit. I think you should wear the other one. Yeah, and I know why. Oh, come on, Tina. It's great. And it shows off all my natural curves. There's no natural about those curves. All right. It is your day, I suppose. All the Dingo clan's going to be there. And the Emmerdale cronies. You look too nice like that. When I step up to that altar, I want every eye to be on me. Hey, you're not dying on me, are you? I don't want you dying before tomorrow. I don't know how these guys do it, day in, day out. I'm shattered. Oh, I wish I didn't have this stag night tonight. I'd much rather have a long bath and a quiet night in with you. Sorry, I'm off home. It's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding day, remember? What? You're going to leave me in this condition? Luke? You're not sorry you're doing any of this, are you? You've had to give up so much for me and the baby. Tina, I'd do it ten times over if I had to. I love you, and I can't imagine my life without you. That's just what I wanted to hear. See ya. It's all right, on. It's all I says to him. From now on, it's Mr. Dingle. All right. <laughs> and as punishment for your lack of respect, I'll have half your tobacco ration. Oh, yeah. You're all right with kids, lad. Wait till you get a taste of pensively. You won't be playing hard man there. Oh, why don't you lot give it a rest, eh? You're supposed to be here celebrating my wedding tomorrow, not listening to this rubbish. What do you know about it? Tina's right. Shut it now. Do you know, I think it's grand to have our family under one roof like this. I think families are wonderful. Take it easy, Dolores. You've got the whole night ahead of you. I don't think I'll ever find myself a man. I think I'll end up a lonely old maid, me. Of course you will, eh? There's two eligible young men in this room. Not me. I'm going to sow my wild oats first. I'll have no sex talk in this house. Go on, get over to Woolpack, you lot. You've been invited to the stag do, haven't you? No, oh, come on, you two. Hey, make sure you buy Luke a drink and all to welcome him into the family. Ah, I know, love. Hey, we'll be down later to check on you. Excuse me, excuse me. No, look, to be fair to you, Luke, you've done a good week's work. To be truthful, I might have worked you a little harder than normal, but it was just to break you in. I thought as much. I feel like I've run the London Marathon. Oh, well, get a couple of pints down here. You'll forget about it. No, I can't. I'm under sentence of death if I turn up tomorrow with a hangover. Excuse me? You're not even married yet, and she's telling you how much you can drink? Oh! <laughs> That's the thin end at Wedge, that is. If you don't show Mum's boss straight off, you'll be sorry. Oh, oh, leave off. Things have changed a bit since your day, Mike. I don't allow wife duck in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, move the pity. <laughs> Hello, it must be chucking out time at the asylum. <laughs> and that's his future in laws that you're talking about. Hi, Luke, Zach. can I get you a drink? Double malt. No, oh, we'll get you one. Oh. Suppose you'll be nervous about tomorrow. Well, don't worry. I'll be okay on the day. Yeah, you can always pull out of it. <laughs> right, what are you having? Have a lager, please. Okie dokie. Just one more night to go. Oh, no, no. Right, he's got a nerve coming in here, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, you're not the only yeah. one. Why? Right, right. Bottled it. Hey, look, how about some service over here? Harry? <laughs> we have a word with Einstein here while I go and collect a few glasses. Sure thing. Oh, okay. Stop your apple, sweetheart, and get us a drink, will you? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Anson. 
Let's you and me come to an arrangement. You treat us with a bit of respect and I don't put your head through toilet window. Hello. Okay. Tina, love, a quick word. Yeah, what? I just wanted to congratulate you on your wedding tomorrow. No, no, and now that you're getting married, I thought I'd give you a little advice from one married woman to another. And get on with it. My family's waiting. Well, it's quite simple. If I ever catch you anywhere near Terry again, even if it's to ask him for a light, I'll do you. Do you understand, love? What are you doing here? Excuse me. I thought we weren't going to meet till tomorrow. Well, I didn't want to be left on my own, did I? Besides, I wanted to check that you don't get completely ratty tonight. I want you fully alert and awake tomorrow. It's our day to remember. Oh. <laughs> Could have swallowed this for a stag 